Hey, it's Dave here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up remote access to your Home Assistant server using DuckDNS and Nginx SSL proxy completely free without needing a Nabucasa subscription. Now, before I start, I just want to say personally, I use Nabucasa and honestly, I think it's worth the small monthly fee. It gives you secure access without having to open up any ports. It includes automatic cloud storage backup. And more importantly, it supports the developers behind Home Assistant. However, those of you who want to use DuckDNS and Nginx as a free alternative, I'm going to walk you through step by step. The first thing you're going to need to do is head over to duckdns.org and you're going to create a domain. I'm going to sign in with my Google account and I'm going to intentionally type in a name that is likely in use. So I'm just going to type in test and then add domain. And you can see that one is already taken. Now I'm going to come up with another idea that is hopefully available and I'm going to click add domain. And now you can see demotech-ha is available for use and registered. Once you've created a domain, you're now going to head back over to Home Assistant and install the Duck DNS add-on. Go to settings, go to add-ons, click add-on store and do a search for Duck. Go ahead and install. And now you're going to go to the configuration tab. And you're going to need to add that domain that you've recently created. So if you go back to the Duck DNS page, you can see the one I made is demotech-ha. And it's also going to have .duckdns.org at the end. So I'm going to head back over to Home Assistant and I'm going to paste it into Domains. Just going to remove that X. I'm going to repeat exactly the same for the token field. I'm going to copy the token here. I'm going to purposely sabotage this by making a slight mistake in the token. And from accept terms, you're going to set that to true. And then click save. Now you're going to go back to the info tab. Change watchdog to on so it just restarts if it crashes. Click start and then go straight to the logs. And what I'm expecting to see here is it's going to fire up an error message right at the end. And you can see here, it's got error, deploy challenge hook returned with non-zero exit code. Now I did that on purpose. If you go to the configuration tab, I'm gonna reveal the token and you can see I've added some spaces on purpose just so that you know what that error code is. I'm just gonna click away. I'm now going to save it and it's just gonna ask to restart again and this time I'm going to go back to logs and what I should see is it's going to get a little bit further this time without any error messages. That's looking good. Now that you've installed and configured DuckDNS, we're now going to install an add-in called Nginx which is basically the opposite. It's going to allow you to access your Home Assistant unencrypted when on the same network, where DuckDNS is the opposite. It allows you to access Home Assistant externally whilst being encrypted. So if you go to Settings, go to Add-ons, click on Add-on Store. If you go to the search and type in NGINX, Click on that one, click install. 
Once that's installed, go to the configuration tab and you're going to repeat some of the steps you did earlier, but for this add-on. So for domain, it's going to be this part I've got here where it's demotech-ha and you're going to include the .duckdns.org. So I'm just going to copy that in. Then you're going to scroll down and where it says active, you're going to change that to true. And click save and then scroll down to the bottom of the page. I'm not going to change this port, but make note that it says 443 because later on we're going to do some port forwarding and it's important it goes to that same number. You could change this, but for this demo, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now we're going to go to the info tab. If you check watchdog, so it just means it restarts if it crashes and go ahead and start it. And if you go to the documentation tab, you'll notice here it's referencing some YAML, which we're going to copy. You're going to need something like file editor. If you haven't already got that, go to settings, go to add-ons, go to add-on store, and just do a search for file editor and go ahead and install it. I've already got it installed on my machine, so I'm going to go straight to it. And we're going to be opening the configuration.yaml file. You can do that by clicking on the folder and you'll find it here and then you bring it up. I'm going to paste that bit of code in. Now I'm just going to add an extra two lines, which I'm going to put directly underneath. What this basically does is if someone tries to log in and fails five times with a bad password, it's going to automatically ban their IP address, which just adds an extra layer of security. One of the things you're probably going to be concerned about is, well, what if I accidentally type in a password wrong five times and now my IP is banned? How do I get around that? Well, if you go here, click on that folder, what there should be in this directory is a file called ip underscore bans dot yaml. Because I've got no ban entries created, at the moment that file doesn't exist so I can't show you. But what you would need to do is either delete that file or go in there and delete that entry. I'm just going to go back to configuration.yaml and I'm going to click save. And then we're going to go to developer tools, check configuration, and we're just going to go ahead and restart Home Assistant. While Home Assistant is restarting, I'm going to do some port forwarding. Now this is the interface for my router, but unless you've got the exact same one, I won't be able to give you a step-by-step -step guide. I recommend you go to a website like portforwarding.com and let's just say you had an Asus router, you could do search and it's going to give you a list of various routers relating to that model and hopefully one of those guides will put you in the right step. Or if not, you could always just type in your router model and just do a Google search with port forwarding and hopefully it will help. However, I'm going to show you how I do it on mine and some of these steps may or may not be useful, but I'm hoping it will at least give you an idea of how it works. So I'm going to go into this port forwarding section of mine. I'm going to add new port mapping. I'm then going to just give it a name. I'll leave that to TCP. I'm going to make the WAN port to 8123. Now, what this means is whatever your external web address is or your dynamic ducks.org address is afterwards you're going to do colon and then it'll be that port so it'll be colon 8123 i'm just choosing that because that's the one home assist is you might want to actually have something completely random so it just maybe adds that extra layer of security now this part here where it says lan 
this is the part where it needs to match that add-on. So I'm just going to go back to that now. I'm going to go to settings, add-on, and I'm going to go back here, go to configuration, right to the bottom, and you see how that says 443. That can be another port again, but because that's 443, this also must be 443. Otherwise, it's not going to work. They're not going to be able to communicate because that's the external port. That port forwards to 443, which then forwards to that. If you don't make them the same, it's not going to work. I'm just going to type in the IP address of my Home Assistant server, which is the internal IP. I'm going to click that Add button. And then I'm going to close it. And that's the port forwarding done. So what I'm going to try now is see if I can resolve the dynamic DNS using that port. So I'm just going to paste it into this new tab. And you can see it's got 8123 at the end. And you can see there it's resolving it, which is brilliant. Another thing you're going to also need to do is if you go to Home Assistant, we're now going to need to add that DuckDNS URL into Home Assistant. So if you go to Settings, go to System, and go to Network, and you'll see there's a section here where it says Home Assistant URL, and it's already kind of gave you a clear guide that it's got DuckDNS.org and then 8123. So I'm going to copy the one I've set up in, which is going to look like that. And just reminding you, the 8123 is whatever you set that WAN port in the router. So had you make that a random number, you need to make sure they are the same. And now I'm just going to click Save. The reason we're doing this last part here is if I have the Home Assistant app on one of my smartphones, while it will work perfectly fine on the same network, as soon as I leave my apartment and I'm on an external IP address, this will allow it to work automatically. So you won't have to remember that address and type it into your mobile phone because the app will have it. Now, those of you using ESP Home, if I go over to this GitHub forum, you can see there's some headaches with ESP Home and Nginx causing some problems. If I scroll down halfway through this post, you're going to see there's a fix that has been referenced here about creating a file, which is this file here, and you're saving it into the shared folder. I'm just going to copy this piece of code, and I'm going to go back to Home Assistant, and I'm going to go to File Editor, and I'm going to navigate to that path. Now you're probably going to find, because you need to go a level up from Home Assistant, it doesn't appear to allow me to do that. If you're having that problem, go to Settings, go to Add-ons, go to File Editor, go to Configuration, and just make sure this Enforce Base Path is turned off. If I save changes, it's now going to restart File Editor. Now I'm going to go back into File Editor. And now you can see I can go the next level up in terms of the folder structure. And I'm going to look for a folder called Share, which is this one here. And I'm going to create that file. Click New File paste that name in and click OK. Then I'm going to click into that file to open it. And I'm going to copy that piece of code. One thing to watch out for here is you'll notice it references port 12345. I'm going to change that to 8123, which is the external WAN port I mentioned earlier that I've used. If you did your port forwarding to another port, then you'll need to reflect that particular one. So that was the WAN port that I set earlier to 8123. Now I'm going to click Save. 
and I'm just going to check the configuration YAML's not got any error messages which is looking good and then I'm just going to give Home Assistant another restart and that's it you have now set up secure remote access to your Home Assistant setup using Duck DNS and Nginx I hope this guide helped make the process clearer and if you found it useful give it a like and consider subscribing for more smart home automation tutorials. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comments section, or even better, join my Discord channel where we can discuss it further. Bye for now.